Hey guys, Pete here. This will be the first of several spoiler recap videos I'll be making over the next week. Since there isn't any action or filming going on for season 7 right now, the news will probably be slow. So I decided to go back and put all the stuff we know already together in a handful of videos that are just organized so you can keep up with all of what we know about the different characters and storylines. As the title suggests, this is full of spoilers. It's almost entirely spoilers for Season 7 cast news and filming, so if you don't want to know what's going to happen in Season 7, please stop watching. You can check out my Are the Gods Real non-spoilers video to learn about my book giveaway if you're spoiler adverse, and everyone else, please stick around to the end so you can learn how to enter. With that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the characters who don't have a big enough story to have their own video. Like characters who we haven't seen for a while are going to pop back up, like, you know, Gendry. So I basically went back and watched all my previous spoiler videos and pulled out the relevant information for this particular category. One of the first things that was going around in the speculation mill and was actually a story with legs for a while, I mean people were reporting on this, was that Angela Lansbury was going to be in season 7. That turned out to be completely false and if you really think about it, what the hell would she play in Game of Thrones? Anyways, she's not in it and another story that got popular around that same time was that Rhaegar Targaryen had been cast, which I'll be honest, I didn't like the theory at the time and I was hoping it wasn't true, but after I saw the history and lore about the tourney at Harrenhal and how they left out Rhaegar for the most part in that, I'm leaning towards this is probably going to be a flashback Rhaegar. The obvious idea of what Rhaegar would be in a flashback for will relate to Lyanna Stark. I'm guessing it would come in a, a vision that Bran has, and it could even be their wedding, which a lot of people speculate may have happened on the Isle of Faces. When this story was out and I took that photo, the one here, I actually saved it as fake Rhaegar. So I had to go look him up real quick. His name's Devin Oliver, and he is in a band called I See Stars. And the whole rumor started when he said he may have been in season seven of Game of Thrones. So he looks like, if you could look up, you go Google him, he looks like Rhaegar. He might as well be Rhaegar. So let's move on. One of the things that got me most pumped and actually started me on the path of making a weekly spoiler report was an early report we got about the Greyjoys and the fact that they had both been, you know, Theon and Yara had both been filming what looks like a battle at sea where they'd be going up against their uncle, the evil Euron Greyjoy. At this time, we heard that one of the Sand Snakes would be killed and that either Theon or Yara would be taken captive by Euron. Later, we got confirmation on most of those things as we saw Euron come into town to present the Sand Snakes and Yara to Queen Cersei. Euron's only been, I think, in two episodes of the show so far, so a lot of people don't really think of him as a, an exciting character, but anybody who's read the books is definitely pumped up about this. We found out that he will be joining forces with Cersei, almost for sure, and I'll get more into what we know about that when I go into Cersei's story in the season in a separate video. As mentioned, we saw that Yara is the one that gets captured, and we got a lot of information about what Theon will be doing in the meantime. We learned that he will be meeting back up with Jon and actually saw photos of this reunion, which didn't go well. And that basically after he gets separated from Yara and the rest of the Greyjoy fleet during the battle with Euron, he ends up going to Dragonstone. I'll talk more about the homecoming reception part in the King in the North video, but we also got some footage that shows Theon getting his ass kicked by the Ironborn. So from that we got some, you know, some set rumors that were saying that, you know, they were basically done with Theon. He must have done something and wasn't very honorable and maybe he left Yara behind or something along those lines. So he paid the price. The biggest return character is obviously Gendry. I mean, this guy's been gone forever and it's been the, you know, subject of endless amount of memes and discussion about where he might be. We first saw the actor Joe Dempsey who plays him at an airport in Belfast which sent up the alarm bells and then we got full on shots of him in scenes at Zumea where he was wielding a warhammer with the Baratheon sigil on it. 
There's so many things that have happened since then that I almost forget about how awesome this actually is. I mean, Zumeo was that set location where basically the paparazzi had an open shot to be able to film things that were going on while the cast and crew were filming. And we literally had a video of the entire scene where Tyrion and Davos are talking to gold cloaks and Gendry pulls out a Warhammer and beats their asses. We also got a couple other shots of him later on where we saw that he has re-entered the fold. We don't know what he's doing, but he's definitely on the right side. So we'll probably get to learn a little bit more of that once the actual trailers start to come out. We weren't really sure what Joro was going to be up to this season, and we got quite a lot to go off of here. He was first spotted in Belfast early on, which hinted he might be filming in the studios up there, or he could have been in some scenes in the north. Then we got a full-on shot of him in a boat when he was approaching Dragonstone. So we'll get more into all of his story when we talk about Daenerys in her own video. Everyone's favorite half-pint, Leanna Mormont, is back and she looks cool as hell with Tormund. Uh, we saw that on Instagram first and then we got some really cool shots of her around the set in Belfast. She looks like she sprouted up a little bit in the off season, but she's still super cool and wearing her nice looking Northman gear. And around the same time, it looked like she would probably be uh, shooting scenes with Davos, Arya, and Jon Snow, which is a pretty incredible lineup when you think about it. Other than where, when she was at the set, we don't get to see much because she only filmed in the North, which we don't really get much set pictures out of um, any of those locations up there. Thoros of Mir is back, and he is supposed to play a larger role in Season 7, according to the um, reports at the time. Our favorite eighth son may be important because of his connection to the Red God, since Melisandre was banished by Jon. We know from the end of last season that he was headed north, and we know from some of the things we've seen here that he'll actually be joining up with quite a few people for a giant battle that goes on up north of the Wall. So... Yeah, he sounds like he's probably going to die up there, <laughs> but, you know, we don't really know because, like I said, there are no leaked scenes and things like that coming out of Belfast. There were a handful of mystery characters that showed up on the set. There was this little kid who, you know, looks like he's a son of a northern house and a mystery redhead who initially was reported to be a body double for Sansa, but it turns out that these two are likely Karstarks. She's probably Alice Karstark, whose story is obviously a lot different than it is in the books, but, it, you know, he's probably a brother or some other such thing. We found out that Dolorous Ed will be involved. Obviously, the new Lord Commander of the Night's Watch will be up north at the Wall, but we found out that he'll actually be meeting up with Bran, which sparked off some serious speculation about Bran's mark from the Night King, but we can't really connect the dots here. We know Bran will probably be in Winterfell later due to what we know about Mira's traveling and some other things we've seen, but... As much as everyone, including myself, has thought that the wall would be coming down at the end of this season, there really hasn't been much as far as evidence is, you know, to this point of that happening. So we're going to have to wait and see exactly if that's the, you know, if that's really what's going to happen or if Bran's just going to pass through, talk to the Night Watch and go see what's happening over at Winterfell. We did get uh, one shot of a taxi cab driver waiting for Ed Muir-Tully's, the actor who plays Ed Muir-Tully, as he was coming back from Belfast. So it's pretty likely that Arya is going to meet with him before she leaves the Riverlands. But that's li that's literally it. We got we know he was there. We know he went to Belfast, but nothing else about it. As mentioned, Mira was spotted on set, and she's obviously up north. But what was interesting here was is that one of these photos was spotted at the Money Glass Studios, where they usually shoot Winterfell scenes. And they don't shoot anything else there. It's not like a multi-purpose thing. So this is a pretty good indication that Mira and Bran do make it to Winterfell before the end of Season 7. Now, we have a pretty good idea that Jon won't be there anymore at that time. But Sansa and Arya should be. So that's going to make for a gigantic Stark family reunion. There was one shot of the set that was rumored to be Melisandre from Spain. But it isn't likely the case. There was a woman in a red cloak photograph from a very long distance, but other than that, there's no supporting evidence that Carice Van Houten was in Spain during that time. 
There's really not much else to say about it. So let's hope that we still get a chance to get some Melisandre in the next season. I mean, yeah, Thoros could carry the Red God's bag for a little bit, but we definitely need some Melisandre action. One interesting character that popped up in both Belfast and Spain was Francis, the little bird. You might not know her by name, but she was involved in the murdering of Pycelle at the end of season six. And it's pretty big news because she's officially working for Kyburn now and, you know, obviously Queen Cersei. But her showing up when she did actually hints to an enduring loyalty to Varys, which, you know, is that's got to be something we think about is what kind of power he can pull when it comes to those little birds that worked for him with all those years once he arrives at King's Landing, which I'll talk about when we get into a different video. An Archmaester who I couldn't remember, Archmaester Ebros was cast. And there we also got a shot of Maester Vulcan. He's going to be back. You know, he was the Maester at Winterfell when the Boltons were holding it. He was the guy who was kind of sent off to get Willa and bring her and the boy to Ramsay so that he could have the dogs eat her. This was kind of interesting. The, the Archmaester Ebros thing was kind of interesting because when you look into what he does, he's a healer. And we had this Jim Broadbent, the guy from Harry Potter and all kinds of other stuff. He's a pretty well-established actor. We had these rumors that he was cast, which he has been. And a lot of us were hoping it was going to be for Marwyn the Mage. But now it looks pretty much like he was actually for Archmaester Ebros, who will play a part in helping Samwell cure the grayscale for Jorah. We also heard news that Tycho Nostars from the Iron Bank will be coming back and he'll most likely look, be looking to get paid from House Lannister, who's now firmly seated on the throne. We know that Cersei wasn't really in a hurry to pay them back, so that's probably going to lead to some chaos of some sort. We got a shot of Bronn showing up in Catheres, and we'll get way more into what he's doing when we talk about Jamie, because he's obviously going to be involved in the battles at Jamie's side. Randall and Dick and Tarly are going to be back this season, and we know that James Faulkner is going to be continuing to play Randall, and that Tom Hopper has been cast to replace the guy who played Dick and Tarly last season. The Tarleys kind of get themselves into it, and I'll talk about that in a different video, but these guys will definitely be playing a major role in Season 7 as well. We also had word that Conor McGregor of the UFC will be a pirate on Euron's ship, The Silence. That Uncle Benjen is coming back for a scene up north, most likely with his nephew, Jon Snow. Littlefinger, of course, is involved, but I'll talk about him when I talk about the other Starks up north. The Sand Snakes, as mentioned, got trapped and captured or whatever, and one of them is supposedly killed off. Sam and Gilly showed up and did some scenes in Old Town where they look like they're going to be taking off and going back north. And it has been confirmed that because Jorah is the son of the old bear, J.R. Mormont, who was the Lord Commander at the Wall when Samwell first showed up, Sam feels compelled to try to help him and cures his grayscale at the Citadel when the other maesters won't help out. So that's pretty much it for the satellite characters. If you didn't hear someone's name yet or I didn't go into their story, it's coming up in a following video. I'm going to do these right after the other, hopefully each day if I can. We'll just have to see what happens. But the next one is going to be about the King in the North, Jon Snow, and his story throughout Season 7 that we know so far. So please tune in and check that out soon. Make sure you like this video if you liked it, and if you want to enter the book giveaway, subscribe now if you're not already subscribed, and leave a comment on this video or any of the other ones where I mention this particular giveaway. The way it works is once I hit 28,000 subscribers, I will send one lucky commenter a copy of the 20th anniversary of A Game of Thrones by George R. Martin. There's a link in the description to check it out. If you haven't seen it yet, it's awesome. It's illustrated. It's just the best. So subscribe, like, and comment, and hopefully you'll be the winner. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.